What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Calgary Sessions. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. This is the first show. Um, my guest today is, uh, we go back a lot of years. Um, I'll let him introduce himself, name, where he's working, and we'll uh, get this thing kicked off. Well, this is really exciting to be here. And uh, yeah, my name is Rob Sodchuk. Uh, I own and operate Turkey and Pistols. We're a design and custom apparel studio uh, based in Redwood Meadows outside of Bragg Creek, which is outside the big city of Calgary. And like you brought up, I like to say we're from the bush near the Elbow River, which is just a little fun branding. And I think keeps it just a little bit light and whatever. Completely. I think when you can say you're from the bush, is a different, you're talking uh, yeah. in a different language. Yeah. Um, so just for some context, um, how Rob is sitting in front of me today, I met Rob 19 years ago at this little web design place called Critical Mass. Um, Rob was a graphic designer. I was a production artist, which meant Rob was the genius. I was like the schlep that did all the grunt work. Um, the one little story that Rob doesn't know um, that I've been thinking about, you know, the last week leading up to this first show is, um, Rob worked in this, in this area of, in critical mass, this little kind of like hallway between two boardrooms. And I remember one day walking over there and he was working on a badge or a belt buckle or something. It was something really cool. And it was, it blew me away how cool it was. And from that moment on, I realized that I would never be like a critical mass designer. Cause that was like at the pinnacle of the web design world at the time. And it kind of just put me in my place, and which was really cool. It, it, I don't feel like I was, my ego got hurt. I just realized at the level Rob was at back then that I would never get there. And I'm still not never going to get there. And Rob continues to evolve and, and push boundaries, which is, you know, I'm watching from afar, but it's super rad. The other cool thing about this relationship is Rob did my branding for Shortline Creative. And Rob has also done the branding for this podcast, The Calgary Sessions. So you know, back it up 18 years ago, I'm thinking this guy walks on water because his designs are crazy. I'm now fortunate enough that he's built out two brands for me. And now I get to interview him for my very first podcast. So there is the backstory for where me and Rob come from. So thanks for coming. Yeah, well, that's a lot. Um, I can't even remember what that actually project could have been. I mean, there probably could have been belt buckles. <laughs> It could have been Las Vegas. Visit oh, Las yeah. Vegas. We we used to do a lot of fun things. We were making some badges for that before badge design was even part of a thing. I right? think that was it. Yeah, we made this whole like personas. Yeah. To be different people in in uh, Vegas. So yep. maybe that was it because we made this um, hip hop one so you can get a certificate. So you, so if you're going to Vegas, you could pretend to be different people, and one of them was a hip hop mogul. Cool. And you could like there was a phone number to call, and you could take these business cards and and their certificate even like that you were a certified hip-hop mogul and you could download them all off the website crazy and that's probably what it was i think but yeah i guess i've been in so much but i mean that's a lot of compliments to put my way because there's some super talented people Dude. in that building and they were it would almost felt like you just there was someone that you were looking up to. There was someone else in the room that was like, no way, I wish I could be like them. And yeah. it was an exciting time. It was yeah. a different time, way different time. And even what you're, what you're talking about, like the production role versus what I was doing, there was so many, there was so many needs to build a website back then that yeah. you couldn't just like pick the color of a button and change it 900 times. People had to literally make it blue or green, right? Like yeah. and cut it. colors. Yeah. And cut it and make it a graphic and make it. So it was kind of a different time, but yeah. And I got to meet so many great people. And on, on my side, I'm looking at you and you're also in the music scene and you're DJing and you know everybody in town and you're getting me into a bar, I think. <laughs> and like maybe once. <laughs> yeah, we, I would drop drop your name at the door every time to get in the embassy. And like that like you just started to be in this world of people who were so differently talented and, and I always I've always been drawn by anybody who was like, Oh, well, you're doing that and I'm not doing that. I don't I wanna learn. I've been always drawn to like I would have went behind the DJ booth to figure out what you're doing, right? Yep. Just to just sit there and watch and, yep. but yeah. So, I mean, don't, don't think it wasn't coming the other way. You yeah, know? Yeah. You're a talented dude too. So. It's, 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 and you, it's interesting you bring up the cats that we worked with at CMAS. I think, um, 
you know, hopefully I'm going to invite a few more of those creative yeah, dudes absolutely. on the show because absolutely. I think, you know, some of those people that you come across, like there's a reason you met them at a certain time. And, you know, I've stayed in loose contact with a bunch of these super creative people. So it'd be really interesting. You know, part of this show, I should back it up a little bit. The idea behind the show is, you know, entrepreneurs, artists, and athletes. Those are kind of three topics that I'm into. So, you know, the artists that we used to work with that have now turned into entrepreneurs like yourself. I think there's going to be a pretty cool list of old CMAS people coming through this yeah, show, absolutely. hopefully. Absolutely. So it'll, uh, it'll be really cool. Um, so yeah, so, the, so, you know, the show's pretty basic. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, not, I'm not overthinking anything. I, I want to know kind of your origin story. So, you know, back it up as far as you go, but I'd love to understand how you, you know, started running Turkey and Pistols now, you know, graphic design shop in the bush doing custom swag, logo design, branding. So it'd be really interesting to hear the kind of story. Like, I know you're from Lloyd, so go back as far as you want, but I think there's a moment when you realize you're an artist and you're not, you know, an, an engineer or a doctor. There's a, there's a moment there, and I'm kind of curious to see where you, right. where that is. Well, I grew up in uh, a little city, Lloydminster. It's on the border of Alberta and Saskatchewan, which made it a kind of a unique story right off the big get-go growing up. Yep. Um, it's funny because I don't remember it being so small town as I now, when I go back and see it, I kind of think I had a bit of an urban, you know, upbringing, even though we were in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Uh, my family's originally from all kinds of small towns all all around there. My dad's from a really small town in, called Edgerton, Alberta. And <laughs> Like uh, how many people? 350 some, I think, <laughs> awesome. you know? Um, <laughs> farm town really small my mom's from an even smaller place called lone rock saskatchewan and that's um where we spent the first few years of my life was there Crazy. um sorry where how close are any of those to emma lake saskatchewan i'm not sure hmm. sorry sorry random fun fact i just had a, a buddy that grew up on emma lake so i just you're, you're saying these small towns so i'm kind of curious they're probably close a lot of small towns in, in saskatchewan and, and alberta like they have lots of culture and they and branches out and they end up people seem to know somebody from some of these random places yep. I've been. But my mom was from uh, Lone Rock, Saskatchewan, which isn't even a, a place anymore. So the municipality's given up on Lone Rock and they're not going to support it mm -hmm. for for water and all this. So they're really just going to become a bunch of nomads, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it was really cool because it was a really small town. Yep. So it wasn't until I got here and maybe even moved out to Brett to Redwood and Bragg to realize oh this is what I really love this is what I, I miss um, but growing up in Lloydminster I did kind of grow up urban and I was in the 80s kid and video games came out and that kind of stuff so I was super into movies and video games and did you did you sorry did, did you when you're when you're looking at like video games and movies were you looking at it from like a creative lens like were you trying to dissect a video game like how it looked back then or were you just like you just had it was fun all doing fascination it? i think i was a first obsessed with music and mm. and i still am like it's like my my muse my outside of the job yep. thing i do which still i dream of becoming a real job but yeah but i i didn't know how to do that then and i think that's was really drawing me to all these other aspects right like okay i can't play guitar like i wish i could or singing seems silly then right yep. like um, your friends would kind of make fun of you, but I, I, I started watching cartoons with my uncles. And so I was super into Looney Tunes and all of that stuff. So you, I was drawn to really different things that were creative and I just started drawing. I remember a really young drawing and I would just try to draw the cartoons I loved and, hmm. uh, the baseball from major league. Yep. I remember with the yeah, glasses yeah, yeah. and the Mohawk yep. and draw that stuff. And I didn't think anything of it that it was becoming anything. And then it kind of just fell off because like, yeah, video games came and I was just fascinated with technology. So that probably started a whole other branch of what I was. But I knew I just had like some sort of creative itch and yep. technology still in my head is like for sure. a creative tool yep. for me rather than like true technology and development. But I was just drawn to video games right away. Um, it was so the colors, the graphics, the stories, the animations, all of that stuff. But I didn't think about it then. I just kind of was like loving it. And my, yep. you, you find your core crew of people who love music and video games. So I had my best friends and we were all in the same shit. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's probably where it started to get creative. But when I was drawn to these people, 
one of them was into drawing like and he was the best how old were you like around when you started when you're starting to feel this well i guess i'd always been doing art um but it was probably about in like all through elementary i was already drawing yep drawing bo jackson and were you good like are they good i would like to see them I, in my head they're not terrible right yeah <laughs> but um but i don't have a lot of it my brother has a lot of my stuff from high school he mm. found recently he yep. said it's really good and i'm like i used to draw spawn and cool so you just kind of i just started to draw things that were already art right yep. like that was because i didn't know how else to get there and yep. you know you're learning art at school and whatever but i met my buddy steve Vallette. yep so, ass boy yeah he's the best and and he was one of the best if not the best artist around in my mm -hmm. age and our age group mm -hmm. and you could see him he's different so it's almost like that reignited i'm gonna draw again too cool so this is probably in junior high uh, me and steve and my buddy jim taylor the three of us just became thick as thieves and we were kind of artists that loved to draw and we had our own individual styles that kind of branched off this core kind of cool. crew of people. And then we found like hip hop and I was, ju I was just going to ask you, so yeah. you guys are artists and then I'd love to where, musically, where, where do you guys listen we, to? So, I mean, growing up before I even knew it, like country music was beaten into my brain and mm -hmm. probably weird stuff, not like anything radio. Yep. So lots of old stuff, old Hank Williams, but John Prine is like my favorite. And he's like my favorite. He's literally the the first song I can remember like hearing and, and remembering lyrics to is don't please don't bear me by John Prine. Cool. So all this country music is in my head and all my fa family played and uncles played. And so it was kind of something you deviate from when you're in your teens. Right. Yep. But hip hop arrived. And I remember getting a mixtape when I was like, <laughs> No joke, like it, in kindergarten, no someone way. gave me a tape, a mixtape, and it had um, Run DMC on it. No way. And Fat Boys. Cool. And it had like It's Tricky and and Walk This Way and awesome. all this stuff, but the Fat Boys too. So I knew there was this like world that wasn't anywhere connected to mine, right? Like yep. that was out there floating somewhere I didn't even know. And it, and it just, I was so obsessed with it. And I got into basketball and I saw the connection between hip hop and basketball right away. And my friends were really into basketball and hip hop. So in, in our teens, we just totally were like this hip hop crew in, hmm. in town. That we, didn't, we didn't rap. But hip hop we were, in Lloyd, just so I understand there was, this. There was another crew too. And they were, <laughs> awesome. they were into like different rap. And then there was this other guy. So then they were into NWA and the harder, harder yep. stuff. Um, but ours, we were like graffiti artists. Cool. And we, we were obsessed with the Source magazine. And, yep. and that really just opened the world up to us, right? To go... There's young guys doing this stuff, even though they didn't seem young at yep. the time. Um, where like it seemed so accessible. So art really became all high school. We did murals. Our art teacher kind of just appointed us the presidents. Cool. Even though we didn't do anything in the club. Yep. It was, and we're asked, why'd you do this? He's like, so we can get you out of class to go paint murals. And we ended up doing some at the mall and in the cool in the school. And so it was really this like we were this creative thing right yeah so i think now that i think about it it's like then you could see the separation versus like you know people searching for jobs yep and then there's the creative people yep but we had no idea what we we're gonna do with it like that was the, the the biggest struggle right well there was no like being a graphic designer web design whatever it was like back then it wasn't really a thing you might have been a print designer making weird things but yeah the well, lane what it is right now as far as being a creative was definitely not you didn't know you just yeah. drew right yeah you just drew pictures and i think a lot of people are probably still stuck in that i mean instagram opens that up these days but then i remember going to career day and i asked about <laughs> photography and the photographer <laughs> was a local great like family photographer killed it right portraits yep. for days but he didn't know and i didn't know how to ask the question like how do yep. you take advertising photos or how do you take cool shots cars like i just didn't know how to formulate what i was yep looking for um and so yeah it wasn't really we didn't know what to do um but then my my other buddy shows up and it's steve's cousin clay weishauer like right? clay like clay from yeah, critical yeah. mass so <laughs> so there's a center of the universe sometimes at, at critical mass with a lot of really talented people yep but um let me have a sip of this yeah okay you're hammering it but um yeah, Clay was already like he's 
I can't remember how much older than us he was, like four or five years maybe, maybe yeah. not that much. But he was already kind of making the decision how to become the next step, go to college, that sort of thing. Or he might have been, been in in the first year. Um, but him and Steve would draw since they were kids, and then they used to paint windows in Camrose, Alberta. Crazy. So they already knew how to make money as artists. Yeah. And we were seeing this in 15, and then we got pulled into that world, and me and Steve started painting windows around Lloyd and just learning how to make money as a creative instead of having a real job. You know? Cool. Um, real job when you I, yep. I hate saying it that way but I mean it was kind of that way like other friends had like a job at a store and we just would go paint windows and get money and um, just like the like traditional like whatever the business needed on the windows you guys you guys just come up with your concept and well, kind of like there? seasonal like the stampede, like stampede ones like yeah the stampede. Christmas stuff whatever. and they were inspired by the stampede and they did it for the big valley jamboree yeah and so Clay and him had like kind of almost planned like he's Clay was going to go to ACAD or ACA at the time, right? Crazy. Alberta College of Art. That's yep. all it was. And it didn't even have ACAD or now yep. it's a university. But um, he was going there. So Clay was going. Yeah. So that was the, was that, you think that was the first time you heard about that school? How to get out. Yeah. How to get out and okay. be an artist and cool. go to college for an artist. Awesome. So, so Grant McEwen was the, the closest like reach for a creative design like we didn't even know know what design really was we were thinking about movies mm. um because we watched this show called movie magic when we were kids okay so and creating your own shorts kind of thing or just movie magic was the breakdown of special effects of oh. movies so they talked about ilm so when we were young we knew who ilm was and we knew that they made stuff and explosions and all this stuff so we were really obsessed with like the sketch art of that and then how it translated into this thing so Movie Magic was this TV show. I should YouTube it, but for sure, <laughs> it had everything how they'd explode, like, like everything, like houses for movies and stuff. So that was really an obsession of like art and and real world stuff yep. and the movies. But again, it seemed like million miles away, which it really was. But um, but it, it's, what's interesting is like you had a little like a little posse, yeah, which is which is. It really interesting because sometimes I think as a creative and um, maybe you feel like you're siloed, you might be by yourself, maybe people don't understand what you're doing, but it's at a young age to have a little posse that kind of like you're all into the same thing is probably pretty powerful at a young age. It was age. good. It drove us, yeah. right? Like it exposed each other to one thing or another. I think um, I wish maybe we had like another person to just say, you know, you're cool. You have a style and you have a style and you have a style. And, right. And, and now let that happen together as opposed to like make it a competition. I yep. think too early it was always a competition, right? Like it's, and it should be like yours is there and now your picture's yeah. here. Like stand alone. But yeah, having a crew at least to kind of give us direction to yep. go, right? What's interesting though, I think, you know, that competition, that internal drive, it goes back to that, you know, the first thing I said about you, I, I realized right away that I could never get there. But when, what's interesting is every creative has their own little lane. And I think the minute you start comparing yourself to a different one, I wish I could draw like that. I wish I could animate like that. As soon as you do that, you're kind of missing out on what you're good at and the lane that you could go down. Everyone can't be good at the same thing. And I think that's the interesting piece for me that, you know, it was like, I'm good at a few things creatively. I know I can do these things and anybody else, you know, the other lanes, I just know I can't go there, which is totally fine because I can't do it all. Well, you're cog in a wheel though of a bigger piece, right? And, yeah. and, the, and the moment you accept that you could live a really great, happy life and, and have a great successful career because it's funny when people say like designer versus production artist, some production artists make so much money and they do stuff that none of us could possibly do because yep. in production artist in this world is a whole different thing in this world. But production artist to me is like, we're all production artists now. We all have to be because we can create it, but we all have to now, there isn't that rung anymore. Yeah, totally. It has to be like, you need all the skills in the bag. Totally. And before the world divided it for us, like our employers divided it yeah. for us, but there was so much crossover so many times. Totally. Um, but I also see it as like, it's like being in a band. You play the drums. Like yeah. you're not gonna be like playing guitar at the same time. You gotta like, I know the guitar player is getting all impressed, but yeah. you hold the beat, right? Yeah. Like it's like, yeah. there's a whole rung of this thing. Totally. But yeah, I mean, the competition and creativity is one thing that I, I wish could be removed more and more because yeah. it would make us all share and yeah. make projects better. But I, th I think it's confidence too, right? It's confidence in, 
from you know the person that's that's the really good person in the group has to be okay with like talking to the other people and just kind of like coaching like almost like if you know you're you played a high level being like a mentor like, yeah and, and an open conversation about listen like this isn't a competition this isn't we're all going to do something different we're all going to be really cool with what we're going to do but we all don't have to play at the exact same level because that's not what creativity is yeah absolutely and we were just, we were all really young too trying to find our way in the For world sure. so we're also young men trying yep. to find our testosterone way. and like, yeah like oh i don't know how to have a, a place in this in this kind of scene too sure. right i was and being from small town yep to be honest like we moved from small town I, I just always felt like I, we were like one step behind, like we missed something else that the big city had, mm. right? So I would say like, at times I came here, like I'm never gonna be that good. They've been, yeah. they've been doing this forever. Or that idea that that kid's been drawing since he was three, I'll never yeah. be that good. That's eventually bullshit, but- But it's a thing. It's a thing in your brain, sure. right? Even the small town, like I said, like coming here, I felt like I'd experienced it in sports. Like yep. when you're like a mm -hmm. small town and you go to Edmonton, mm -hmm. you just get beat on yep right and then or would we go to a smaller town we just beat on them right yeah it's almost like you're walking in I with agree. confidence more than than actual skill right yep but i mean the big city had all the big boys and we just get squashed yeah right? it's just like yeah there's more to draw and i agree yeah. and, that, and that's my like it's you're exactly right it's the exact comparison to, to the sport world you yeah. know like you're always comparing yourself to the best quarterback the best goalie the best whatever you're doing and you know eventually you figure out okay i'm not we're, we all can't be that good. You just got to be really good at what you do. Yeah. And sport wise or creative wise. So I think it's a really, it's obviously a really cool takeaway, but you know, I don't, I don't think it gets talked about all that often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Clay goes to uh, ACA. Yeah. He was going to go, he was there and uh, we just thought, Oh, that's what you do now. So we were, we, we knew we had to get a portfolio together and I think he needed like a specific amount of pieces. We're like, well, let's do that. And we really didn't, we weren't like, jumping at the chance and who knows why right so we both thought well let's work a year and to graduate Gra oh. we graduated high school okay work a year yep. we'll we'll uh get a job and build a portfolio thought no, that's that's what we'll do because we're not really prepared with the portfolio piece and we'd missed the like deadlines for the yeah. year right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever for whatever reason but yeah we were pretty confident of taking this year off so i thought i'd work um but we decided let's move to calgary though and get jobs there why not just get jobs there and then then here right so yep. one weekend we just came here our friends had all come here to ufc okay um so we were like well let's come here look for jobs and we went all over like literally mona lisa looking no for an art job right just anything creative anything yep. close to like a thing and somewhere along the way we found this flyer for um <laughs> Applied Multimedia Training Center, this brand new school in MTC? Calgary. Yeah. So so that was it. Like, we saw this thing and we're like, well, this is, the, and they're saying you can learn graphics in 12 and months. It w well, at that time it was different. And so it was like, learn how to make graphics for video games and movies. And I should rewind though. I did miss a point. So <laughs> in high school, we were thinking ACAD. Um, and before we came down here looking for jobs, our last year of high school, it was actually our, we were in grade 11. We we're walking down the hallway and our art teacher points at us and, and this guy's standing there and he's like, you want to talk to these two guys? And it was me and Valette and we're walking down the hallway. And it was this guy who was in town. They were building this small little company and they're making a video game. <laughs> and they were, this guy was working for these two engineers who had went off they were former residents of Lloydminster. <laughs> we don't know them. They go off, become like s computer science engineers and didn't, could, were too big to go into the military because they wanted to be fighter pilots. Yeah, yeah. These monster, just jack dudes uh, who were super smart, came back to start a video game company out of a place that their mom, who was a real estate agent, got them an office. Wild. And they said, go to the high school and get two artists. And we come walking down and our art teacher is like, he, he was pumped on us, but he's like, these two guys. And they're like, you wanna come and maybe get a job? And we show up at this building and we hadn't even used computers really by this mm -hmm. point. And they're like, this is a job and we can teach you how to make graphics and you could make 
graphics for this game and we'll pay you this much <laughs> and we're like what <laughs> uh okay that sounds like a way better summer <laughs> let's do this so we got exposed to that and they started this thing and they taught us like all these old school techniques and we called clay and we're like hey man instead of summer job and cameras you should come do do this with us yep so he's working with us and um I mean, Steve did that, right? I didn't call his mom and say, you should come down here, but <laughs> I would have. Uh, it worked out really well. But all summer, we learned what the internet was. We learned, and this was like 1995, 94. <laughs> so early, we, early. We were downloading stuff from the company. So what this game turned out to be, it's called uh, Shattered Steel. It was one of these robot games. Oh, yeah. But it was the very first game of Bioware. No way. Out of Edmonton, yeah. Crazy. So it was their first game, and they sold it to this Interplay, which was like a national or – so it had worldwide release. So we're going into grade 12 <laughs> with – we we spent all the money by the, by the time <laughs> – by the time – we didn't – you know, we got paid. We, um, we bought like Kangle hats and like Everything. jackets and whatever. Like we were pimped out. Um but we knew about the internet and video games and, mm. and making it accessible and and uh, making art on computers, which mm. really was not a thing. No. Nope. For some odd reason, over the summer, one of our teachers sets up a Mac studio in our school. Wow. With Photoshop no and way. Premiere and a couple other crazy things at the time. So we already kind of knew about this stuff. Like one, right? was there one computer in the school? No, they got a whole Mac. No lab. way. So just by chance. Crazy. So we got to enroll in that, and then they gave us access to it whenever we wanted to, mm -hmm. and uh, that became oh, computers and video games was our obsession and what we thought we were gonna go to Calgary to do. Yeah. But we knew oh, ACAD was kind of the thing. So we, yep. I think that was probably the decision not to go right away and take a year off yep but yeah we're here we're running around calgary looking for a job um knowing we probably want to make video games or movies or whatever make dinosaurs so we're already know like the artists names who do who did jurassic park right cool. like we knew these guys by yep. name and we knew that they were from sheridan college in ontario and like so we were kind of obsessed with that so we just looked for the closest thing possible to what yep. it is we were doing and uh, we found Applied Multimedia Training Center, which was saying you learn how to make video games. On the cloud trail, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have this flyer and we're like, hey, we should go check it out. And we walk in instead of going to look for jobs that day. And they're like, this is a school and it's eight months at the time. Okay. And it was the second year, year of operation. What year was this? So this would have been 97. Okay. Or the late 96. Yep. And... Uh, we went home and told our parents we should go to this thing. And my, are there, our, like our two parents got together and we're like, well, let's send them here. Cause yeah. I think they were starting to know they didn't know how to like guide us into the yeah. next thing we were looking for. And yeah, not that much longer. We were enrolled in the winter class. Crazy. And me and Steve live here and we were sharing this tiny two bedroom apartment that was like $500 a month. No Even way. then it was cheap, right? Crazy. Yeah. So like we're living off McLeod trail right by uh, Wendy's there yeah. and, and guitar, guitar works. I just go look, stare in the window. <laughs> I didn't even play by that point. I was just drooling over guitars, but, and we're living in Calgary, mm -hmm. learning Photoshop and premiere and what we thought was going to be design. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was it. Crazy. It was so crazy. then after, well, the funny thing is I went to AMTC in like 2001. Right, right. And I went there because of a, a mutual good friend of ours, Chris Payne. He went there. Right. And, it, you know, he's a creative dude. And, and I, I could never, you know, I, I went to Mount Royal a couple of times and dropped out. You know, once I got to reading break, I just, I just wouldn't go back to school because I hated it. Payne goes to AMTC. It was a 12-month pro program back then. And every month you kind of learn, you know, a new piece of software. And, he, and he, he, I was seeing what he was doing. I'm like, that looks cool. Mm -hmm. and so anyways i went there in 2001 for 12 months so it's funny that you were there like four years ahead of that yeah and like it was i i learned right away that they were teaching us software yeah the designers th that taught some of them were old school so mm -hmm. one my the one teacher i wish i could remember his name he was like he would literally hand draw old 
rock posters, like the legit ones. Like, and he, he was all kind of buggered up from old school hand drawing typography. Mm. Um, but he got into computers really, and he made a transition. He could see how creativity could just like extend from yep. one thing to another. So he was really great, but he kind of pretty much made it clear. Like, I can't really teach you how to be creative, but I can teach you all the tools. Yep. And then he just like start, start making whatever you want. Right. Mm. And then he'd kind of guide us through it. So, so it's pretty cool. So, and then, so where'd you go after that then? Did you go to school after that or was that, was that your, that like, was it. that was your schooling? Yeah. So, so everything eight months to rely on that, roll the dice. Wow. Yeah. Um, crazy. So the crazy thing is like me going back to like, again, the, the original like opener of this show was all the designers that we worked with all went to ACAD or whatever it was called back then. Them, yeah. And it was like this four year thing. And you know, they learned the, the fundamentals of all this stuff and, so it kind of blows my mind that you went to, you went to AMTC. There's a, there's quite a few. So there was me and Valette, right? Yep. You, we knew that. Yep. Um, Payne. Yep. But Jordan Mowbray. Yep. Total old school. Grant. Like no all, way. a lot of people that it was because it's like a different schooling, right? Yeah. What I would say, and no slight on it, but the, the ACAD students started coming out with no skills. It Like they had creative right. basis. Like the found this like... Of like typography theory, or colors, yeah, yeah okay. theory. They yep. knew a lot of books, yep. titles, and they knew what Swedish design looked like. And yep. I did not. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. But I also could make it. So we kind of just went the other way, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of having to learn the, the tools on our own, we just dove headfirst into design. Gotcha. So we, even when we were at, a, at AMTC, we were like buying design mags and hmm. design inspiration like you get just as much schooling if you For just sure. jump right into an industry right it yeah. was just harder like then because it was like magazines yeah so you yeah who's gonna buy the magazine this mm -hmm. this month right mm -hmm. to get the cd full of totally. tips and tricks and all kinds of stuff so but you just kind of learn i th i would always say i learned my design from just becoming a student of everything I loved. Yep. And when I really let it go that I didn't know the theory or, or Swedish design or what all this stuff. And I realized that like hip hop had its own basis. Could be a thing. And it, there was creativity in it. And there was really good typography and design in that or rock and roll or like basketball. So I just took the like, oh, there's great design. Right. And then you right. just emulate right, it right. and you without realizing it you're learning typography you're learning yeah. colors you're learning contrast and some of it is just kind of like just What's cool. second nature yep. to to some people but yep. i do believe it's all learn learnable right yeah that's that's crazy man so then so that whole that whole idea of you know looking around for looking at different elements around and kind of drawing some creativity from them how does that then spin into turkeys and pistols like how does that that is does that thought process still alive right now or where's Where's yeah. the, where's the Turkey inspiration come from? Oh, well, that's it. Like, so like the business now is branded off of a music of music and it's actually from a John Prine song. Awesome. So when I was looking for my own personal brand, I knew I didn't want to become Rob Sajak design. I was always Rob Sajak design, right? I, you could hire me at any time. And I, w I had Rob .com. I still have it, but it was, I didn't want to be now independent Rob, design shop yep. and I didn't really want to use my last name for no reason other than like imagine wearing a shirt that says Sawchuck on it it's yep. not really yep. as cool um but I also wanted a flag that I could have I could fly it over there it's not Rob Sawchuck it's a brand it's a voice it's a tone it's everything it yep. can be its own personality and even if it's just the you know the straightforward whatever voice that comes out of me at least it's over there but once you're under a brand you can actually experiment right so mm -hmm. i could make turkey and pistols designs and yep. i could make all of these different things so i was looking for what this was going to be named and i couldn't i was stuck right because most things are like related to the whatever the process it is like usually you know some sort of silk screen yep. reference yep. or something or color reference and i was um at the time, though, I was really more focused on building signs. I wanted to build one-off, wood-carved, hand-painted signs. Cool. Because um, in high school, funny enough, I was in entrepreneurship class, which probably <laughs> They had it back me. then? Yeah. No way. Grade 12, and it had actually been in our school for quite a while. Hmm. 
And we, by the end of the year, we had to do a business plan. And I did a business plan on uh, design and T-shirt printing. Crazy. Price. That had sign kind of wrapped in because yep. I kind of knew it, there was a little. I, and it still is kind of a weird connection to it. But the crazy thing is, dude, sorry, the crazy, all these little moments back then, when now when you step back and look at it, there's all these dots that are on the board. Yeah. And all these dots have like, every every decision you made back then has led you to exactly where you need to be right now. I would say like I've done so many things and I've always just taken on, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's try that. Let's it. That I forget more projects than I remember. Yeah. Even, yeah, developing a business plan when I was in high school yeah. for this current <laughs> business I ha have right now, right? It was a different idea, but it was I had to remember that way later on. Yeah. That it was like, oh yeah, this has been in the works for a long time. Yeah, you don't, you don't just like randomly wake up one day and, and just pull all the levers to make it happen. This is like, a there's a foundation that led you to be able to pull this off. Yeah, and, and, and to do it with confidence, yep. I think, without the, I, like I have no support in terms of financial backing or, yep. or a, a loan from a bank. Like to just pull the trigger on buying a machine and turning your whole life upside down is, yep. I mean, what other way? You're totally. gonna, none of the numbers are going to make sense if yep. you really beat yourself up on it. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, and I've been, I've been thinking about this lately, it's just you can have passion to do something. But it's, it seems like you need passion plus a little like a little self-awareness beside it. You know, me to open up a custom apparel shop just because I love T-shirts would never really work. You know, I don't have the the design skills to pull it off. I don't have the, you know, the urge to kind of do the manual labor, you know, for big hours. I might like so I just I, I know that I can't do it. But your story is interesting because you just. There's all these little subtle nuances in the foundation to get you to where you are today. And I just think it's like passion, self-awareness put together, and all of a sudden you have a successful business. And I was exposed to a lot of hard work. Like yeah. even that um, that video game, we worked some long hours. Yep. And we had to learn on the fly and, you know, our kind of job depended on it. It wasn't like they were going to fire us, but you kind of just learn on the fly. And sometimes you can't even think about it. You just yep. have to start making changes and like eventually you'll get there right there it goes so yeah i mean to where we are now like it was a lot like you said a lot i, I worked at some agencies yeah. i've been in in branding um but when i'm out there look i just wanted this to be a hobby shop to be at first mm -hmm. i needed a creative outlet that wasn't my current creative director role at a big agency yep. dealing with corporate clients yep. and those corporate clients were killing all my creative energy I put three months into a design and then they could just squash the project. That's mm -hmm. three months of my life. Yeah, three months sure. of every energy that I came from, that I could yep. find to put into a project. And my, the way I describe a brand or an idea, it's magic. We make magic. Like it doesn't exist. We take two ideas and a bunch of, of our experience and some reference somewhere and we smash it into something. And now it's a real live thing like yeah. it's not like a box of ideas they're sitting somewhere and everybody everyone's got like 400 yeah. logos just waiting for you to call mm -hmm. and i just pull out the old number circle, 17 <laughs> yeah, circle with your initials in it right like there isn't a pattern to this like yeah. and so even i was getting beat up with like when can you have the idea rob i'm like uh, i will you're asking me to just make something magically appear. I can't tell you in two hours, mm -hmm. I will have 40 great ideas, yeah. right? And they'll all be innovative. And yeah. so I was really missing that like work because I was, I was a leader. I was a manager. I was a guy who had to be in a room just yep. because, right? Yep. And so I thought Turkey and Pistols could be just an outlet. Uh, I, I did, I work out a lot, but I was starting to just burn out because all I was doing was working out, right? Because, mm -hmm. I would work and then try to just change my my mood. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's build this little sign shop. I'll buy a CNC. Uh, that's I can start carving signs and building signs. I bought uh, silk or uh, I bought off Kijiji a, a vinyl cutter for like 150 bucks. Cool. So I started accumulating stuff, and then one day I'm like, okay, I, I'll make signs. I'll and little wood things and brand them. And I know how to take a graphic and put it on something. And so I was just experimenting. And then I saw Instagram really become what it's good at yep. is showcasing brands, right? And yep. showcasing businesses that are super unique. And I saw these people just like cutting wood and showing the sawdust on a picture. And they were just 
they were getting business and they were getting followers and they were building a brand and they didn't mm -hmm. really even know they were building a business. Yep. And I'm like, wow. And I'm talking to my clients about Instagram and I'm talking about social media and I'm saying like, you can really control a lot of this and connect to your real customers. And you guys are getting blown out of the water by like two guys in a basement, one lady in a garage yep. making the most beautiful signs in the world. Like they're killing you in advertising and they're doing it for free. Right? Yep. So, and I was getting a lot of pushback because I was in a traditional, very traditional it, like kind a of box. world of advertising, right? Yep. And no one wanted to experiment as much as they wanted me to be as innovative as possible. They didn't want to do it. Yep. Right? Are you crazy? It's work. It's work. Those are great ideas. Are you crazy? We <laughs> yeah. can't do any of them. Right? So I just said, I'm going to make my own experiment on the hobby shop. And maybe, maybe, maybe one day I'll do this. Um, at the same time, my wife was starting to get a little too sick. And I had taken some time off of, of uh, work. And it was like three months of not getting paid. Uh, and I was like, you know what? that's not comfortable to have one source of income mm -hmm. anymore. I'm like, I wonder if I could make this little sign shop a thing, right? Use all the stuff and talking about to my clients and build, yep. build a business. And it'll be a source of income that my wife could, could control and, yep. and I'll stay in my current role, right? Or whatever would happen. And then I was looking for a brand name like I was talking about. And I didn't know what we were going to do. And I was making kind of wood signs. And I wanted people to know it was very different of a wood sign. is is like traditional sign shop, right? I'm struggling. I'm driving to work. And I'm listening to John Prine. And Christmas in Prison comes on. John Prine song. And the first two lines are, it was Christmas in prison. And the food was real good. We had turkey and pistols carved out of wood and my whole basis was going to be the cnc wood carving <laughs> company right awesome. i'm like just like it just hit me like crazy i'm like this is it this is it's from an old song that's already a cool cool story yeah turkey and pistols are you sure like it kind of sounds kooky and weird and um i started kind of just telling people about it and they're kind of like look at me a little weird mm -hmm. and i'm like mm -hmm. okay i'm on to something right yeah uncomfortable I, I always say well, one unnamed creative person will be like what are you talking about <laughs> and i'm like good good i'm glad you don't like it we're right? going this way yeah like it's just like it just stuck and it never w could go away and i just went home and i made a little design and mm -hmm. that's where what i i'm saying like once i had a design that wasn't my name yeah i could you, experiment all day you're right? just free you're just like you could go you could just whatever you want there's no wrong decision yeah and then and try another thing. Try, yeah. It's my own thing. Yeah. Put it in a circle. Put it in a square. You yeah. Know? Try a different font. Yeah. But once it was a thing, I'm like, okay, I I put I just put it on Instagram. Yeah. I put it live. Yeah. I didn't even have all the branding yet. That, yeah. And then, and then seriously, people just started calling. Like I put the website together. I put it on Google. Put it on Facebook. And no joke in. I, I don't know what the actual timeline was, but before I knew it, people were calling for real jobs. Mm -hmm. Like, and they just didn't think I wasn't, I, they didn't, had no clue that it was a brand new business yeah. at all. One off dude. They, they didn't know that it was one guy, one man show. They yeah. were just like, can we, can you do 300 signs? Like, like it was just right away. Yep. But I think it was because Instagram, Facebook, yep. Google page and a real website and all out of the gate. And, and, you know, talent, you know, but the, there the design, a, the designs were like, there wasn't a lot on the site. That's no, but it was like, I tried to pepper in as much as I could, but yeah, it yeah. was really surprising to me uh, being in marketing and branding that I'm like, what? Like there's barely anything there. Yeah. And real customers were just asking right away. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the beginning of it, but yep. it was really just a wood shop. And I was still working at an advertising mm -hmm. agency, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, one point, when I was younger, we I did work in clo clothing, right? Yeah. Had a good child with, with some buds. And yep. that was really the basis of like, well, then I can really take design. I can connect it with apparel that I used to do where we really just put the designs on the stuff and we hired out the silk screening. Yep. I was like, well, if we get our own equipment, we just close the loop and yeah. hey, we should be okay. Yeah. The signs weren't really that big, but I do one or two and then someone be like but can you print me like 50 shirts I'm mm. like not yet and then i'm like man we should do this 
experimented with silk screen and I couldn't afford a big piece of equipment. Like how much were those? Like those ones with like eight arms that like Oh like fifty to eighty. Oh crazy. K okay. In my yep. quick research. Yep. I mean, it's pretty sketch, but we started with a little four color press and learned that we're gonna need to up the game facility wise, mm -hmm. equipment wise. Yep everything i'm like you can't really start this at the same time it had, i'd been watching director garment printing happening which was this new modern technology of printing like textile ink on on uh with a basically a big bubble jet printer cool so i knew that that was also a lot of shops had one of those and i thought what, what if we could get ourselves started and then get this machine but when um i was off with my wife I, I, we kept just saying like everyone keeps asking for shirts and and we hummed and hawed about how do we solve our problem of like single income you know yeah what if she gets sick again and then uh and then we went let's buy this let's release this machine without doing much research without really knowing how to print a shirt yeah cure a shirt Whatever I knew, I could get the design, and I, and the machine looks like it prints basically out of the computer. Line it up and hit a button. Maybe, looked, maybe looked pretty basic to me, right? The rest will fill in the gaps along the way. So we talked. Our, I don't know how we did it, but we we signed we signed this lease before cool. you knew it. Before I went back to work, I had this machine delivered, hmm. and next thing you know, I had two business like I had a real career and then a home based business. Wild. And then it took off. And, and how long has it been kind of like full-time, it's your jam, business is rolling? I mean, it's hard to say full-time. Like, I would say I'm still battling any of my old world stuff. So yep. I get asked to do a lot of websites or at least quote a lot on a lot of websites these yep. days, um, which got tiring because sure. I was spending a lot of time talking to people about, oh, yeah, I'm Rob. I used to do a lot of great branding and yep. websites. And it would be a lot of beating around the bush, like always in web design, where yep. it'd take kind of two or three months to get going. Yeah. And then I, I would have t-shirts that I'd have to print that week and I could like just make money that week, bonk, bonk, bonk. So I would have to say I'm still up until even this month, I've been still outright dancing. now saying no. Like I would I would quote on stuff and it wouldn't happen as quick as the apparel stuff. So I want to say this last year has been as big a focus on Turkey Pills because I had yep. I got my accounting dialed, I yep. got my everything dialed. But to say that I'm just a custom apparel shop that doesn't yep. do like I did a summer camp, which kind of took away from it. The reason I'm saying this is because I really think now is the time to say I make clothing. You're just all in. Yeah, because it's there's no other world that connects to this. Yep. Signs and clothing don't make any sense. Yep. Web design. It doesn't really, I can help you, I can guide you, but there's so many people who can do it now. Yeah. And I just don't have the, the drive anymore. I don't, yeah. It doesn't make me want to wake up and do it. But I, I think from all my experience and having so many projects on the go and feeling like that's cool at times, um, I think now my best success it has been when I just put my head down and say, I make custom apparel yeah, and design cool. related to custom apparel. I do branding. Because if the if a company really gets me and, yeah. and knows what what I do for them, yep. But to think I'm gonna like hold your hand with your brand and build you a brand book yeah. for the rest, you don't need that. Sometimes yeah. you just My need word. a dope logo, colors, dude. And so I want to say, I just sent some email saying I don't really do that anymore. So <laughs> I'm still, I've been struggled, but I think COVID had to do with it to be honest, because I was in a struggle. For sure. I was just, as everybody was, was yeah. like, uh, uh, let's just say yes to everything. Yep. And then once the world's back to normal, we can get, so I hope now from this point on, it's just like, I make clothes for people. Dude, I, I think saying that is super powerful. Like yeah. to, to understand that you, this is now your path and you don't have to worry about either, you know, looking back what I did, you know, you did some crazy things back in the day. You don't have to, you don't have to go back there anymore. It's like, head down forward and you can just like put all your energy into it. I think there's a lot of power in that. I love the experience of doing so many different things. Yeah. Like before we started, I was explaining like, I was, well, like at an advertising agency in these, this day and age. And, and we went, we started from before the iPhone 
Yep. Right? Was then it launched Instagram wasn't in a thing. Mm-hmm. We evolved with social media, video, all of this stuff. Yep. It was a really great time, but I would go from one of the biggest websites in Calgary to launch to a downtown Calgary campaign to flying all over Saskatchewan and Alberta and Toronto to make a video documentary Mm -hmm. to then come back and start a logo project or like it was so much yeah god like i didn't feel like i was like i would just hit the groove with the video stuff right and then i'd be off bounce to the next one never do video until like some random sketch project's got to come in and now you're a video director again right yeah and you can't just like this day and they just say i'm the creative director i just said come up with concept you're part of the scene. Yeah. And so I love, and I love that part, but now to just say, no, like I'm going to get really good at making clothes for people. And even this, this morning, I think I said it, I kind of helped. It kind of even came to my mind and, and branding evolves so much with you and you should allow it. But I think, you know, we make quality clothing for human beings. Yeah, it's cool. That's it. Like we don't, we don't think of them as customers. We don't think I, it's really cool to think that I make, clothes that some human is wearing some hardworking Albertan somewhere and it might be their favorite shirt. Yep. That's different than me making a custom apparel or even maybe being a print shop. It we make clothes. It's really weird. Dude, the cool thing about this conversation is I think when we look back on it, you know, this thing's gonna be on the internet forever. When we look back on it and in five, six years and, and whatever this moment is, you defining exactly what you're doing and what you're passionate about, I think is going to be really cool. Because I, I just to say it out loud, to even capture it on camera and then to just execute on it, I think it's going to be, I think you're going to kill it. Like there's only one way to go about it. Well, I, I mean, I only say that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. Like you can't, I went to school after, after me and you were at critical mass. I went to SAIT. And I, I went and chased an old dream of being in radio. That's how I met my wife, which is the most the like best a, thing that ever happened yeah, in, my, yeah. in my world. I can't say it. Like, I might find success in design, but, you know, falling in love with my wife and marrying her is the best thing that ever happened because it just kind of put foundation and purpose and everything yep. in front of me. But, like, like, I don't even know where I'm going with it. Oh, but, like, I went to Sate just to chase an old dream, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, take a risk and... And, and try these different things. Like, yep. you know, you, you roll the dice and then see what happens. I, I agree, guess, man. If you never get a chance. It's super cool, man. I love I love hearing your story kind of start to finish because, I, you know, I've known you for a long time. I don't know, like, the story. So it's cool to just actually hear this. The one thing I want to do to kind of bring this, bring this thing home is, and you gave me this idea, so I'm like, credit where credit is due. The Calgary, you know, the, the name of the show is The Calgary Sessions. And what I'm, you know, I don't know exactly how to ask the question, but... It, you know, part of me just wants to say, if you think of Calgary, like what does Calgary mean to you? Or, you know, when I say, when you say the word Calgary out loud, where does your head go? Like, what do you, what's your memory of Calgary? Me, you know, I would talk about the flames and like friends and growing up and like, but for you, I'm curious to see, when you say Calgary, like, what does it mean to you? I know you live in the bush now, but like, what does Calgary mean to you? And, you know, uh, you know, relate it back to where you are right now. Why? I moved and became who I am here. Like I be, this is where I grew up as an adult, right? I moved here when I was 19. Um, my parents were way back in Lloyd. I pretty much just kind of grew up with all my friends, but what was moving here was like exposed me to the world. Like, yeah. and even though it's for some people think it's a hick town, I saw my first concert here, I think. Um, I saw Run DMC play here at the Village Square <laughs> Leisure Center. No way. Absolutely. <laughs> the sketchiest show of all time. Oh, wow. I went to underground shows here. I talked to you about it. DJ yep. Rice up on 4th Street in this basement shack. Yeah. Like, it was where real world things were happening. That When I was growing up, there was no hip-hop scene in an underground thing. Like, the DMC Championships at the Republic, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, 
I watched those shows and it was like a, the real world was now r- achievable. I came here and there was graffiti mm. on buildings and stuff. In Lloyd, if there was graffiti on buildings, we put it there. Yeah. Like, r- no <laughs> joke. Um, I'm glad that there's ins- more kids inspired now to put more graffiti all over Lloydminster. Um, but at that time, it was so... Mm. But coming here was like everything. It was like we, we snowboarded. So the source in 17th Ave was yeah. our life. Yeah. So it was like that kind of connection of urban and still the mountains and snowboarding. Like there was so much of a, my adult life is Calgary, cool. right? That's Growing cool. Growing up and finding my space. And yeah, just you, you know, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but you are who you are because of moving here at a young age and just being exposed to so many things in, in yeah. Calgary. And no safety net too. Like yeah, right. I didn't ha- like, I had my best friends with me, but some of them left. So I literally spent this, like kind of just navigating on my own. My parents moved to Oak Tokes for a while, but Calgary's just kind of been this place where I navigated a little bit on my own as yeah. an adult. And you kind of bounce around from job to job and yep. meet cool people. But yeah, there's a lot of, it was like open it up from a small town kid exposed mm. to some big city stuff, right? Yeah, and didn't chew you up. It actually like... No, it made me like, I truthfully eventually got to LA you know, I got to all these places I idolized and dreamed about, like being yep. a hip hop kid and, and you're in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And you know all about every street in L.A. from hip hop mm-hmm. songs going there. But Calgary brought that to me. Right. Yeah. You know, I got I came here. I made another connection. I got to this other place and I got to just see the world. And then I just come back to this home base. Right. Yeah, that's cool, man. Super cool. Well, um, I want to thank you again. Being my first guest. This is like killer, killer. I talk um, a lot. No, it's good. I think uh, the good thing about this show is like, you know, like I said, out of the gate, entrepreneurs, artists and athletes, you kind of cover two of those uh, buckets, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool having you as my first guest. I think it just everything aligns. It feels like the right move. Safe test, at least. right? Yeah, good. And I can delete this if I have to. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> but anyways, thanks a lot. And uh, for everybody out there, I'll put a link below, but it's Turkey and Pistols, crazy swag. If you need swag or you want to buy some cool designs that are already in the in the bucket, in the can, they're all there. But anyways, Rob Sotchak, Turkey and Pistols. Thanks for coming.